and uh, let's begin uh, i would like to know a little bit about you and uh, what do you do at iit mandi and what are your topics of interest yeah thanks vishnavi uh, so i'm working my name is varun dat i'm working as an associate professor at indian institute of technology mandi himachal pradesh uh, my areas of work include artificial intelligence human computer interaction and cognitive science uh, so uh, to to say a little uh, few more words in this uh, ai of course uh, people say ai ml uh, this is an area i work in Uh, then i am also working in uh, an area called human computer interaction where we try to uh, make computer systems more usable by human beings so um, whether we talk about things like alexa uh, or we talk about interaction using the desktop where we are using a keyboard or mouse and even interaction on virtual meetings like this one uh, how does human beings can pervasively interact uh with uh with with the outside world and of course with the computer this is of interest and then the third area is cognitive science which goes a little deeper into what how the brain works what happens when we see information how do we make decisions uh and these are of course not mundane decisions as to where to sit or what to eat uh some of these decisions may be where to invest money uh whether to invest it in stock market versus bonds um so how people value uh you know the outcomes uh, the probability or the risks and also some more decisions in terms of decisions for climate change uh, decisions in cyber security uh, where we are trying to protect or defend against cyber attacks um and also in general uh, decisions related to a human where human beings are involved Mr. So that I get it, but what are the courses you think that are uh, that are the uh, students are taking like hot cakes or uh, if deep tech ecosystem has to flourish tomorrow in the country? Yeah. What are the courses that the future entrepreneurs are looking at now in premier institutes like IITs? Okay, so uh, this, thank you for asking this question. And uh, see, uh, courses have. there are some of those traditional courses and those courses are something which we cannot uh, part with uh, i'll give you those names uh, uh, a course in operating systems course in database management systems course in computer networks uh, and uh, you know these are some of the course in algorithm and data structure these are like four or five courses we cannot replace uh, they have to be there because they are the building blocks of many other courses which people students take uh now with the advent of ai ml deep learning what has happened is that there is a greater demand that we should have a curriculum which should expose students to machine learning way ahead um, of course earlier people probably uh, used to stay start ai or ml in their final year as the final semester of the eighth semester but now probably the expectation is that they start right in the school when they come to the btech and they say okay i already know python i know uh, i can do machine learning so what should i do next uh, so we have such kind of students as well so the idea is that curriculum has to evolve uh, at iit mandi we have done something very interesting uh, we have made uh, machine learning data science as part of our core curriculum which students do in their first year uh, so they so students all students who are coming in the btech program are doing three courses of data science data science 1 2 and 3 uh, to give them basic uh, level of machine learning and some students are um, you know they take these three courses and then they go beyond them um, and and that's how it is so basically we have tried to configure at least at iit mandi a curriculum at the undergrad level which is more tuned with what are the industry now you also ask me what other new courses we can have uh, so for uh, if you see the, the the last few years of publications which are coming up uh, people have been talking about deep learning more. and uh, there are applications to computer vision uh, image processing uh, speech natural language processing um, and such kind of areas so so when we talk about courses uh, if, and of course the course has to build on one on top of the other so if you start with a basic course on ai 
as the first level course. Uh, the second level course could be a course on data mining. A third level course could be deep learning. A fourth level course could be advanced deep learning. So in the advanced deep learning, which is the highest level as of now, you would have concepts like uh, generative adversarial networks. Uh, you would have concepts like transformer models, uh, which have attention mechanisms. Um, now, if a person starts taking this highest level right now, uh, it will go over the, the, the student's head because to understand these concepts, a person should have, right from the start, should have knowledge of linear algebra, should have knowledge of AI, should have knowledge of data mining, should have knowledge of the deep learning. And then you kind of start saying, okay, now I am at the stage when I can start adding something interesting to such models to make them even more interesting. So this is the cutting edge. So definitely curriculums uh, would benefit by having such kind of elective courses, uh, which I mentioned uh, as part of their uh, makeup, but exposing students early on, uh, even in the first year, first semester, or second semester to such kind of courses um, and switching to Python as a programming language may be beneficial. So, Mr. Dutt, of course, these courses are important and along with the courses, there is an aspect of research as well that uh, institutes like IITs or NITs are known for. Now, when it comes to AI or robotics or such advanced technologies, probably like quantum also, what are the challenges when it comes to research and development and what more support or what are the solutions to those challenges? How do you navigate them? Yeah, okay. So uh, that's correct that um, as part of our um, makeup, uh, ultimately we want to do research. So there I would say that there are two aspects to it. Uh, an undergraduate student uh, is not being trained for research, but at the end of uh, say in the final year, we do give them a capstone project where they can attach uh, for say a year's time uh, with a faculty colleague and do research. And some of the research at the undergraduate level takes place through that. However, at the graduate level, uh, typically masters and PhD level, uh, the emphasis is wholly on research. So there, uh, I feel there are two aspects one we can do. Uh, we can, of course, uh, see the uh, at academic institutes, R1 institutes like IIT, it's the faculty who drive the research. So the faculty is the one who would uh, bring a project uh, either from the government, uh, which is called a sponsored project, or through industry, uh, which is maybe a consultancy project. Um, and, and, and then once the project is in place, uh, then the faculty would hire students, uh, typically masters or PhD, to work on such problems. And uh, so it is mostly driven by faculty on campus. And um, definitely uh, it is something which is, um, which is what the bread and butter of, uh, of, a, of a faculty at IIT is, uh, their research. So <laughs> specifically, uh, one thing is that, that involvement of industry uh, may help, likely help, because I feel that uh, if industry is uh, solving, you know, they're solving these day-to-day -day teething problems, there, of course, uh, you have solutions. That's not the kind of problem for research. Uh, the kind of problem for research is this long-term problem where I give an example of this patient journey problem where if you have, you know, if you solve this problem, it might have a high impact. Uh, it's something which is not really pressing right now, but at the same time, if you solve it, uh, if you come up with an algorithm which can tell what kind of, how many doctors visits a person will need, for this kind of an ailment and what would be his um, medicine profile and with titrations or dosage, uh, then it becomes automatic. So, uh, you know, a doctor or a patient would also get to know uh, many things. So see, what I'm trying to say is that even in, uh, typically when you are talking about uh, problems from industry and research, you need to have a long-term perspective on those. Okay, so we did talk about research and especially um, researchers also land up on solutions which can later be commercialized, but that happens in the market later on. A lot of uh, deep technology is still in the lab. How, how do you think universities can contribute or what is the road to commercialization at the university level itself? 
yeah so there are a, a few things we, uh, which come to my mind when we talk about commercialization um, one is that uh, if the commercialization uh, see the commercialization has to happen through prototyping and prototyping is best done with uh, with in courses or typically lab based practicum based courses so for example at iit mandi for example we have a practicum course we call it design practicum which every btech student goes through in the second year they are given the goal of making something working which includes electrical mechanical computer science in it and the objective is to make it working not using the best sets of tools or technologies but make it working so uh, we have had projects like 3d printer and many of these kinds of things created by students so what it does that when a student does uh, embark upon uh, such kind of technology uh, prototypes um the next stage is to uh, see if the student or a set of students with their faculty is interested in commercialization there uh, there are two things we can do uh, one of course um, groom them into uh, commercialization and the practices uh, of startups and things uh, in the curriculum but another way is to associate the students uh, and encourage them to submit their ideas uh, to an incubator and uh, typically we have such incubators uh, technology incubators uh, and iit campuses uh, one incubator we have is uh, iit mandi catalyst here um, for particularly iit mandi related incubations and outside incubations and there uh, we are uh, there the students can go and uh, actually uh, pitch their ideas and then see whether they have potential and then they can go into something like an exploration program where they try out you know a feel of what the market would be uh, what the product whether the product to sell uh, whether the product in its current state needs uh, improvement because it's still a prototype what they bring to the incubator and what are the things uh, related to you know coming to the business sense of selling things so here uh, we we are talking about uh, exploration which may be a short term program and then if they go further they can become uh, they can pitch for uh, seed funding uh, where they actually set up a company and uh, they actually get some sizable amount of money from the government schemes uh, including the incubator schemes and uh, and then try the ideas so one thing i'll say is that this is how we can groom our students to do it but one important role uh, academics can also play here um is to actually um encourage the students and and become partners with the students in this. so for example i'll give an example from my own uh, career uh, in 2017 with my colleague here dr k v uday uh, we started uh, working on landslides Uh, you may have heard recently a lot of landslide disasters particularly happening in the rainy season and uh, we actually made a prototype with our students uh, in 2017 on a landslide monitoring device which was a low cost device which was uh, probably the only low cost device and make in india device we had at that time and then we said that okay we reached a level when uh, society said can you try apply you know using this device in alerting us against landslide disasters so we uh, thought that okay this is a time when we should approach an uh, incubator because uh, see helping society can happen in different ways it can happen through projects which are given to faculty but if you want to reach out more to you know from a commercial aspect also and to help in general society large society we need to commercialize so we started a company uh, intior services private limited which is still in existence today in the year 2019 and then we started commercializing this technology with the help of the incubator on campus iit mandi catalyst um, and right now uh, the company is actually helping actively working with himachal government committee in uttarakhand and many of the other clients like indian railways in uh, providing landslide monitoring solutions uh, to the society at a low cost make in india so this is just an example of going from you know just an idea um, to a full blown startup which starts to sell products and uh, many of our students who were at that time starting their masters after graduation from the masters 
have gone in and, um, and contributed to the startup and they are still working in the startup to make it possible. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, um, we've covered the entire gamut of deep tech from courses to how to commercialize it. I'm really thankful that you gave some examples and that will help um, relate our uh, will have audience relate better to the solutions that you spoke about. So thank you, Mr. Dutt. Thank you for uh, taking time out and giving us these insights.